Hey guys, it is April from Getting Cocoa With It. Today I am here to do my August wrap up. I read 13 books in August, which is kind of crazy. That said, four of them were graphic novels, so those you kind of just are able to breeze through. So let's get into it. <music> dive into the actual books. Uh, I wanted to mention that I read two books in this month where the authors villainized infertile women. It's frustrating because as someone who's going through infertility, we actually just tried our first round of IUI and it was not successful. Um, it It's a really hard thing to go through and for someone to villainize women going through that, it just pissed me off. I didn't give those books necessarily really bad reviews. It was just a storyline in, you know, a couple of books that upset me. That said, I did read some really great books. Let's start with the good stuff. I read To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I finally read this book. I feel like most people have already read this book. I know that in the United States, it's often assigned reading in high school. Uh, but this was my first time reading it and I loved it. I can totally see why this is a classic. It's really a growing up story that takes place in the South and we follow Scout and her brother and also her father who's a single father. He's a widower. And Atticus, the father, is a lawyer and he is um, defending a black man who is accused of raping a white woman. So you follow the storyline of the kids and how they grow up in the South and then you also follow this trial and this case and you are confronted with how racism works and you're shown another way of dealing with things, which is Atticus's way. Now, I believe that Atticus, since this book was written, Atticus has kind of been this, like the poster child of how lawyers should be and just how people should be just generally. Now, I think a few months ago now, it might've been a year ago, Malcolm Gladwell wrote an article about how Atticus is actually not um, this poster child for tolerance and for acceptance and he's not this anti-racist character in the South and he actually pointed out some of Atticus's flaws and I found that a really interesting article and I read it after I had read the actual book itself. I'm gonna post that in the link below because I just thought it was very interesting. I didn't agree with everything that Malcolm Gladwell um, said uh, but I thought it was really important to kind of see that Atticus might not be this perfect man that everyone has seemingly made him out to be. So that was book number one. I'm so happy that I've read that. The next book that I read was The Hidden Life of Trees. Now I've been reading this since I think January. It's been a long haul of reading this book, um, but it's actually something that I was reading for work and it was really fascinating. I didn't know nearly as much about trees as I thought I did. I didn't know that they connect to each other through their root systems. They're actually able to support each other through their root systems. When one tree is doing poorly, other trees will rush in to help them through their root systems and give them nourishment that way. I didn't know that deciduous trees actually decide as a cohesive group, whether they're going to bloom that spring or not, they make that decision before spring comes based on the forages around them. It was really fascinating. That said, it's quite dense. So if you are interested in natural history and nature just generally, you might like The Hidden Life of Trees. I personally did. I gave it three stars. So I also read How to Be Parisian Wherever You Are. And guys, I just didn't get it. It was written by, I think, four Parisian women who were, I think, making fun of themselves and the role of the French woman as the, you know, ultimate perfect woman. And I got that, but the book itself didn't make me laugh ever. 
I really didn't get the humor. So I gave this a two star, sadly. I also read I See You and I gave this three stars. This follows a woman in her, I believe, late 40s. And she takes the tube to work uh, every day. And one day she's, you know, reading through a newspaper and she stumbles upon this ad and she sees an image of herself and a, you know, call this line to date me, essentially. And so she calls the line and it doesn't really connect to anything. Um, and then the next day she's looking at this paper and she sees another woman and that woman is actually murdered. And so she's obviously afraid of what is going to happen to her. Is she next? Is this like some sort of man stalking women? And... I liked the concept of this book. I liked the ad and I liked the creepiness. I didn't like our main character at all. She is the definition of a weak woman to me. So this main character can't make a decision for herself to save her life. And she is always afraid of what she said to other people that would upset them at all moments. And that really annoyed me. Um, the other thing that really annoyed me was that she, so that she sees this ad of herself. She knows that people are being murdered who also appear in this series of ads. And instead of worrying about herself, she's like, oh, I'm so worried about my daughter. Her daughter doesn't appear in the ads. It's just her, but she's over and over again expressing a fear for her daughter. And you'd think that she'd be worried about herself in that moment. You're the one in the ads, lady. Stop worrying about other women who aren't in the ads. She was just one of the most annoying characters that I've ever read. I'm not dying to read the next Claire McIntosh book. Next, I read a series of graphic novels called Amulet. Now, I read this because of Jenna from Jen the Librarian. She mentioned this series, and it's a middle grade series of graphic novels that are just wonderful. I dove right in and I was immersed in this world. It was very, very interesting about um, these two little kids who live with their mother. Their father has recently died in a horrible car crash and they move to their grandfather's old home. Their grandfather disappeared years ago and so they move there and they find a secret world through this house. It's about their experience, specifically the little girl. She becomes what's called a stonekeeper, and the stonekeeper has powers that other people don't have. And I just loved it. I would definitely read this to like maybe an eight or nine year old. I gave this four stars. I also read The Girl Who Came Home. Now, this was a lovely historical fiction book about uh, a girl who is moving to America from Ireland and she takes the Titanic to America. Well, not quite to America because as we all know, the Titanic sinks and it's her experience. And I really enjoyed this book. The writing was a little bit so-so, it wasn't always perfect, um, but I would definitely read this author again. There's a bit of a love story in here which can annoy me at times. For the most part, I could tolerate it in this book. There were a couple of moments that frustrated me, but I did enjoy this book for sure, and I gave it three stars. Next, I read The Deep by Nick Cutter. Now, this was my August pick for the Dying to Read book club. That's my book club over on Goodreads. I'll put a link in the description box if you'd like to join. Now The Deep, I've done a whole other review about The Deep and I'll link that as well. Um, I enjoyed it. It's a very, very gory horror book. It wasn't perfect writing to me and I found the storyline a little bit all over the place. So for that reason, I gave it three stars. That said, I am going to give Nick Cutter another shot and read The Troop probably in a couple of years because it's a lot of gore. If you don't like gore, you won't like The Deep. Next, I read The Husband's Secret. I buddy read this book with Rachel from The Shades of Orange. 
And I really loved this book. This is a Leanne Moriarty book and she can just do no wrong to me. I really love her writing style. She's really able to take an average woman living an average life and then build a whole story around it. So this follows one character who is rummaging around upstairs in the attic and she stumbles upon a letter that is from her husband and she's meant to read it if he passes away. And you know, he's totally alive and well and so she's like, should I read this? Am I stepping over the line? But of course she reads it because, you know, I would too. And what she reads changes not only her life but changes the lives of these other women in the town that she lives as well. I gave that one four stars. I also read Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. This is a book where an elderly woman is telling the story of her life and the town that she grew up in and lived in as an adult. She's telling that story to a younger woman. This was quite a funny book uh, and there was this really interesting love story between two women and I wish that there was actually more there because it's just like briefly mentioned but it doesn't really um, address it. It doesn't really show that relationship very well so I wish that there had been a little bit more of that. I also found after a while that the humor just wasn't very humorous. I loved this movie as a kid. It was one of my favorite movies of all time when I was little. The movie did an excellent, excellent job of adapting this book. I almost feel like if you've watched the movie, you don't really need to read the book. So for that reason, I gave it three stars. Now the last book that I read is The Tale of Halcyon Crane. This is by Wendy Webb. This book is a bit of a ghost story. It's about a woman whose dad passes away and she's only lived with her dad all her life. Like as a child, she didn't have a mother. She was told that her mother died in a fire. And after he dies, she discovers that her mom was actually alive this entire time and her mom has tracked her down and sent her a letter explaining that she is alive and that she actually thought Halcyon, this woman, was dead all of these years. So they both thought that the other was dead. The mom says, of course, you know, I would love to meet you. Let's try to create a relationship. And just after receiving this letter, just a couple of months later, she finds out that her mother actually has passed away and has left her her home. And her home is on this island where they don't use motor vehicles at all and everyone gets around in this little tiny town. It's kind of a touristy location. Um, they get around by horse and buggy like back in the old days and so she goes to live in this house and she soon finds out that the house is haunted. There is an older woman who has always worked at this house and has always worked for her mother and she has, you know, taken care of the house. She cooks meals and stuff. And that woman has a very um, rich history and really understands the history of Halcyon's life and her family's life. So she starts to tell the story. And this is one of the books that villainizes uh, women with infertility issues. Um, the reason that the house is haunted is because of a decision that is made by a woman struggling with infertility who decides to get help for her infertility. And because of that decision, um, her home is then haunted. I really hated that angle of the book. However, I really did like the haunting itself. I loved the history of the family. I thought that was really rich and interesting. Um, the haunting itself was creepy and I enjoyed that. So I gave this three stars. So those were all of the books that I read in August. What was the best book that you read in August? I would love to know and I will see you next time. Bye.